Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg. When I was in elementary school, I visited my best friend's home and went into his father's study. And his father had a book that we liked looking at the pictures because the book had gruesome pictures. We were too young to read that book. But the gruesome pictures were of dead bodies, very old dead bodies. And um, it was not this edition, but it was The Bog People, Iron Age Man Preserved by P.V. Glob, translated from the Danish. And what we liked was the pictures. Because it showed dead people. And when you're in elementary school and you're a boy, you like pictures of dead people. So we never read it. And eventually I grew up and um, went on my own way. And then a while ago, I noticed that the um, New York Review Books Classics had reprinted this book. And I decided that um, I should revisit it. Now this is, of course, a work of nonfiction about bodies preserved in peat bogs. And um, what you will learn by reading this book is that peat bogs are very good about preventing bacteria from breaking down bodies. So bodies do not decay. And um, when people are pulling up the peat to use for uh, heating sources, they occasionally find some of these bog people. And the bodies are so well preserved that they actually call the local homicide detectives to look at the body because the body looks fresh. There is still flesh available. And of course, it becomes very clear that these, these bodies are in some cases more than 1,500 years old. And a detective is not going to solve the murder case. And murder, it is. Because many of these bodies of the bog people did not die of natural causes. Now this book, for a lot of it, is very clinical. It describes the conditions of bodies found in peat bogs and very technical, not necessarily completely interesting in all cases, unless you are wanting fine details. But there are some interesting things that you can find out. As I only say is this, um, is that um, when they examine these bodies, they examine their internal organs and the stomach, and they discover what these people ate before they died or were put to death. And they reconstructed the diets that the, these people ate. And then they had scientists in the 50s eat these last meals. And um, it was mostly nuts and vegetables. And um, apparently the meals were not very tasty. <laughs> the, the scientists consuming these meals were saying, can we have some Danish brandy to wash down this meal with? And the grains that made a majority of this meal were ground with stone particles. And the stone particles were part of the meals. So these people had worn down teeth, which um, might have been very painful. So what happens here is that, again, the, the author describes these bodies and how they were found. But after he's described the clinical detail, he starts speculating. Why were these people murdered? In some cases, 
some of these people may have been buried alive. And they had to go to some effort to keep these people in the bog. They, they, they had to tie them down and, and make sure they did not rise to the top of the bog. Now, I will not reveal what this author says at the end of the book, because he makes a speculation on why these people were killed. And they were not killed for trivial reasons. And as a modern reading, reader, I was not too shocked at the revelations that this author was um, saying. And I, I sort of sympathized and understood. But when this book was published in the 60s, it might have been quite a shocker for some people to think about these ancient people, that these ancient people had beliefs that were not in line with modern beliefs. And these beliefs is what led them to their deaths. I can say that despite some rather droll technical detail and clinical detail, this book is well worth reading. I think people of an open mind will enjoy exploring the discovery of the bog people and perhaps the reason these bog people were put to death. Keep on reading.